hey guys welcome to lesson two and today we're going to be talking about lines and everything that you need to know about line art now the reason why we're talking about this is because line is one of the seven elements of art we got line as number one we've got shape we've got color we've got texture we have form value and space and so we really want to look at number one in the elements of art and i will be explaining to you the reason why um, line is very important to what we are considering today and what we will be looking at in the process of this course without wasting any of your time let's get right into it what is a line line is the path created when an object moves from one point to another so now in visual arts lines are made when you draw or paint marks in a canvas or paper so basically a line is used to show the form of an object that's basically what a line is used for and we use lines as a starting place to learn all the other core principles of art which are the fundamentals and an example is proportion and um, perspective and portraits and all of that we use lines as a you know starting place to learn all these other core fundamentals now like we said earlier we are going to focus on one fundamental at a time in order to get better now i wrote down a couple of things now here that you need to know about lines and i will just read through them and this is like you know just getting us started as we'll be talking about a few and introducing a few terms as we get deeper into this subject we're going to you know look at other things we're not going to consider all everything today and we're just basically talking about lines and we're looking at exercises and things you can do to get you know warmed up and the right way to actually draw lines like i, I spoke about in the last class we need to look at the core fundamentals and really break them down and make sure you know the nitty-gritties of these things now the very first thing you should know is the quantity of your line is better than the quantity of your line i know this is crazy and it might sound weird like yo what that means and let me let me explain that right um, i bet you probably have seen some artists who make art and you know their lines are like and this is for mostly beginners and you see them having hairy lines and they have messy looking lines they do that consistently and they wonder why they're not growing and they wonder why they're not able to understand the other fundamentals and this actually will, will even take us to the second thing i have written down here which is you'll never truly go deep into a subject until you begin to make clean and structured lines having good lines is the core of understanding any other fundamentals once you understand all the fundamentals and your work is good you can decide to stop using the rules and still make great work once you understand lines then you can stop using lines now you have to, to be able to make clean lines you have to be able to make structured lines before um you will be able to learn certain other fundamentals of art when you have messy lines that's a just that's just quantity and it's not quality and the quality of your line um, will show in how clean your lines are and how structured your lines are right and every line that goes on a canvas means something and there's a reason why you should have you know clean lines quality lines and when i say quality lines i'm talking about clean lines when i say quantity of lines in that context i'm basically referring to um, just a lot of lines that end up looking messy that end up making your work just look hairy and messy now if you look very carefully i said something i said in the second point that there i said once you understand lines then you can top, stop using lines and once you understand the rules then you can comfortably break the rules i bet we've seen professional artists they use really crazy lines and they have this messy aesthetic and if you're a beginner and you want to say oh yeah i that's my art style you're only going to deceive yourself because you will not be able to pay attention to other fundamentals whilst you're using a messy line you'll not be able to actually um actually grasp them and hold them so the artist that you see who uses messy lines as his um, um art style and creates amazing pieces that artist has understood the subject of lines he, he has completely understood the subject and so he can now work out of the rules like i said here you have to understand it first you have to work under the rules and completely understand it before you can work out of the rules lines are also made by photographers or filmmakers when they choose how to angle their cameras and how to compose their shots and yeah if you're a filmmaker or you have a prior knowledge of photography you, you understand this one here and lines can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, straight, curved, or freeform. Now, line, line, line width refers to the thickness or the thinness of a line and the darkness or the lightness. And sometimes one line can be used for all of those things. Okay, so let's talk about physical drawing techniques that will help you get, it, get better with lines. And here we're going into practical steps and I'll be attaching a couple of videos. Catch up. Let's talk about physical drawing techniques to help you get better with your lines. And the very first thing 
here that i stated is use a good brush now if you're if you're working digitally there are certain brushes that you can use in um illustration for for instance the default photoshop brushes are not very good for lines they they don't really work well if you use photoshop and if you use any other um drawing software like clip studio if you have that or medibank or also the sketchbook pro i think you you can find some some brush that really work well with lines and um and i won't i won't talk so much about this because this course is for mobile illustration but we'll look at this when we get to the the last phase of this of, of this course where we we actually go into photoshop and try to create art so i will really explain that in detail there and if you're working traditionally it's basic you just use your pencil make sure it's properly sharpened and that's just that now i i wrote something here i said only professionals can say the brush doesn't really matter like i mentioned in the first quick point to note about line is that once you understand a particular fundamental then you can replicate that in a um using whatever thing you have in your hand now when you when you find an artist who is a professional most times these artists can draw with literally anything you give them and and literally anything you give them they put a stick in fire and they they bring that out and they can literally just draw with that and it turns it turns out great and you give them anything and they, they just draw right and you see like wow this is so good a, a beginner cannot do that and it would not be advisable for a beginner to do that as a beginner it's good to have materials that aid your drawing until you are um properly solid on the fundamentals once you have completely understood those fundamentals then you can say yes the brush doesn't really matter now for you as a beginner you have to really take note of what you are using that is why i would advise for you to start off this phase doing it very traditionally did i just say <laughs> traditionally okay so why why am i saying this this is because um when you're drawing traditionally you you don't have to focus you don't have to think about all of that tech and you just have your clear canvas which is your paper and you're just drawing and drawing and you're just straight on getting creative and you're not worried about ctrl z and you're worried about on doing what you've done and um, shortcuts and all of that and you're just drawing and most of most uh, professional artists use traditional to just you know to, to actually warm up and get ready because when you draw the draft graphics tablet or you're drawing on the screen sometimes you draw and it's, it really doesn't really feel natural enough like when you were drawing with with paper i know we have a lot of um graphic tablets that you know that that, that tries to replicate that natural feeling of drawing with your pen or your pencil on a piece of paper but so far we haven't really we haven't really gotten to that point and so the most natural and most comfortable way that you can actually progress is drawing traditionally and you can move that once you have actually mastered and you know what you're doing now you can move that to the digital medium it would just be you know hand to eye calibration hand to understanding you know hand to eye and that's if you're using a graphics tablet and you know that's just on we'll look at that later on but i would advise you to use a traditional means means for this just get a a notepad and a pencil and that would be that would really help you now the next thing i write here is draw from the shoulder and not your wrist okay okay this is like very 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 important here and I gave you an example this 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 um tip i, I put in right here is something that all my drawing experience this wasn't captured in this tip I, i'm right here it wasn't captured in and so i've been drawing with my wrist as as long as i can remember and i recently stumbled upon this doing some research and going back to my fundamentals and trying to just understand because i've tried to grow and i found out i'm i'm not drawing the right way and this is a physical drawing technique that if you master will really really help your drawing will really really help your drawing skill and you draw with your shoulder and not your wrist now drawing with your shoulders give you a much wider range of movement and it makes it easier to draw confident and consistent flowing lines and when you draw with your wrist you're like you're like you're only able to go this far as far as your your wrist can rotate and you're only able to create short strokes and if you try to go past the range of the of your wrist you end up having wobbly looking lines your lines start looking wobbly but if you draw with your with your shoulder right or your elbow you get you get a much wider range of motion you get a, mo a much wider range of movement so you're able to draw longer lines you're able to draw bigger lines why um much perfect circles because now you're drawing with your shoulder and not your wrist this is what it's like when you're drawing with your wrist now 
the third thing i write here draw with your elbow for smaller lines and marks draw with your elbow for smaller lines and marks so you and use your wrist only on very s small and tiny details this this is very important and i'm not saying don't use your wrist i'm saying use your wrist when you're doing finer details i, I make make it a habit a habit that you draw with your shoulder and your elbow you to note and i just have to say developing the skill of right drawing posture and technique will be a gradual and most times awkward process you'll struggle to gain confidence while using this method but it is the best for you if you intend to take drawing seriously oftentimes you'll get worse before you getting better and drawing regularly with your wrist may lead to carpal tunnel, tunnel and other wrist cramps and injuries so i'm stating here what i'm saying is it's not going to be such an easy process and this is for someone who has been drawing with his wrist for so long now you're learning that yeah you have to draw with your with your elbow and you have to draw with your shoulder now it's going to be awkward because you feel like you're you're, you're trying to learn how to draw all over again and it's just for a short while and that short while will be filled with a lot of exercises daily practices and when you practice daily in less than a few weeks you you get used to it you get used to you you do you do that for two weeks and you get used to it and you 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 go back to to drawing the way you do and when you start off it's going to be awkward because and you you oftentimes find yourself going back to draw with your wrist and yes and that's just how the process is but you have to you have to uh, buckle up and say no, no 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 i have to get better at this thing i have to develop better habits and save yourself injuries and cramps and pain and you notice that when you draw with your wrist you can draw for a very long time you spend one two hours and damn your, your wrist hurts and you're like oh my god why does it hurt so much why does it hurt so much well that's because you're drawing with your wrist that's because you're drawing with your wrist when you draw with your elbow and your shoulder you 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 give you give your your wrist a break <laughs> you give your wrist a break and then you're able to you're able to do much better now there are two stages of drawing anything and i want to talk about these two stages of drawing the first stage of drawing anything and that's that's the first stage it's the mapping out stage now the mapping out stage is the stage where you press incredibly lightly because you are tra still trying to figure out all the proportions and the lines now in this stage you're not sure of your lines i probably change them you probably change them or erase them now this you're just you're just trying to figure out for instance let's say uh, let's say we're trying to we're trying to draw look at what i'm going to do right now let's just talk on up talk about mapping out phase and this mapping out phase i'm let's say let's say i'm trying to draw a a a building for instance and let's let's use a cube and um this is what we're doing right now okay so this is me doing like a mapping out to just realize where where i want to go with this i really am not sure so i'm keeping everything really light and i'm using my eraser and i'm just figuring out where and um, where i want this to be now for this case i'll be paying attention to perspective and all of that and um let's say i'm making this like a small city or a small village or something and i'm trying buildings and a road or something of that sort around so you see this is the build this is the mapping out stage i really i'm not sure about what i'm doing i really am not sure about where i want the perspective to go where i want the lines to be i'm just guessing and say okay how about here it's basically sort of like the conceptualizing stage and i'm just looking at it if i have a reference now i'll just pull that up and have that by the side and just look and you know just map out where i want everything to go and i'm really sure i'm keeping everything light and loose and this is the first stage of drawing anything anything whatsoever and the very next stage is the cleanup stage now this cleanup stage is when you are absolutely sure of your proportions and lines this stage involves you building up your lines and applying certain guidelines of line weight and line style this will lead us to a subject of line weight and line style and build up and let's just jump right to it and let's talk about line weights now okay now before we just move to this i want you to know that it's going to be a process i've mentioned this so many times and i think i addressed this i addressed this in the first video when we talked about false expectations it's going to be a process you're going to start out slow 
and then you get better as you continue to practice as you continue to practice intentionally and taking notes of the fundamentals and most of the things that i've told you here you're going to get better now let's talk about line weight line weight it's basically the level of thickness or thinness of a line now your line weight is used to convey importance is used to emphasize depth and you used to show an object in the distance and many more expressions in art line weight can be cutting through a step called line build up now what is line build up line build up is the art of repeating your lines without going outside of the original or the initial shape of that line usually when you when you're starting out you may not be able to successfully carry out this process of building up your lines and that is okay right that's because you haven't really gained mileage and most of this practice that i will put at the end of this is what will help you to get there now just focus on keeping your lines clean and keep practicing in keep practicing in in line build up you press gently and you just um, lightly and you repeat your, br your brush stroke is about blending the line on top with the line underneath so this is not the same with messy lines because messy lines is creating multiple lines and so you start looking like you like you start looking real hairy and fuzzy and all of that so basically what line build up is, is you're drawing the same line on the same stroke and you're just trying to build up line thickness right and that's when you're trying to emphasize depth or importance or you're trying to you know it depends on what you are going for but basically it's just building up on the same on the same line right now the, the growth process is not going to be a, sh a swift one because most of the time when you draw a straight line you might not be able to get the same stroke on the same line right you you try to draw the same stroke and you're it's not on the initial shape it goes out and you start looking like you're drawing you start looking hairy now so that's what mileage will, will help you gain when you begin to draw you're going to gain mileage when you begin to practice you're, you're going to get consistent lines that out that you know that will be on the same on the same shape and you'll be able to do line build up so it's a, it's a slow process but it's one that is achievable once you're consistent and you're deliberate about it now let's let's just quickly move to how to get better with your lines now put up a list of daily practices that will help you get better and gain mileage as you continue to practice on your lines and art in general which i will list and demonstrate the, at the end of this video now there are a few things to note the very first one you should do, you should note is to use a good brush or pencil i said that the first time um use a very good brush or pencil and the second is disable line smoothing for digital art users if you're using a digital tablet and you have a laptop or whatever you're using a digital tablet or a screen you should disable line smoothening now this is because it helps guide your line and makes it helps makes your line smooth and it restricts you from actually gaining you know that smoothness when you when you move when you move out of that digital medium and you try to draw you find out that you still have the same you know limitation so it, the digital medium should not be an escape route it shouldn't be an escape route it should be something that makes life easy for you but at the same time you should be able to learn from it right it should be able to help you identify and change where you have a uh, break where you're making mistakes and where you're not getting it you know so it shouldn't be an escape route so disable line smoothening for any brush you're using so that you can you can actually gain the experience that comes with drawing now th the third thing here is to make sure you use pen pressure sensitivity now this is just for those of us who are using graphics tablet and i i advise that you should use a notepad and your pencil for this so that you can actually just know what it's like and, and gain that physical experience and that's what you will move to the digital medium so for anyone who is still using the graphics tablet or whatever now you have to make sure to turn off pressure uh, you have to make sure to turn on pressure sensitivity use pressure sensitivity and pressure sensitivity should look something like this when you are drawing and you know you 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 add more pressure the lines become thicker and you reduce the pressure the lines become slim i think i put a video right here now use your arm to your elbow to draw to gain line confidence and avoid fuzzy hairy lines i've said that before now use quick strokes using your arm technique to get better looking lines now while you're using the shoulder and your elbow you want to use quick strokes real real quick quick strokes to get faster and a better looking confident line you don't want your lines to look wobbly and your lines uh, your line will look really scared and be all shaky and all of that so you want to make quicker strokes and this will not be easy because yeah you're going to draw quick strokes and you're not going to get the line at the point where you want it to be that's why the exercises that i've included in this will be very helpful to you because those exercises will help you you know gain mileage it'll help you make your hand strong like <laughs> like we say make your hand strong stronger with the you know the, the whole drawing thing now the third the sixth thing i wrote here for you to um for you to gain for you to take note of is to use line weights use final lines for details and thicker lines for outlines 
now you're going to learn more about this when we talk about the how to actually use these lines in a real in a practical step when you're actually drawing something where should the thick lines be and where should the thin lines be i'll talk about it briefly or oh, i'll just talk about it briefly now i made mention of that on the line weight section i said they are used to emphasize importance i've looked at david nakayama's art and he's a he's well he's a professional cover artist from oh, i think he works with marvel and dc and many other companies like that and i've seen I'll, i think i'll put up his work right here so we can see if you if you take note of his work you find out there's something he's doing he's using he uses thick line to um thick outlines his line weights thick outlines to uh, to sh to um show importance now and he uses that for his outlines and for the inner lines he uses thinner lines smaller lines and you find out that he's really really controlling his line width throughout the whole piece and if you look at this you find out that it's consistent in almost all his art he uses thicker outlines for like the when you find the main character in a in a pose or something or in, there is a, there's a lot going on in the background you find out that there is a thicker outline over the character and that is just a way of showing importance and telling you that focus on this and don't focus on the other you can use that too also you can use thicker lines and then when i mean thicker lines we're talking about line build up here to emphasize depth and when you want to show that some there's a there's a crevice there or the, there's a cavity there you use the line like when objects jump meet at a point that point where the object where okay let's say lines meet at a point that point where the lines meet up you want to put you want to you want to make that um you know thicker than the receding lines right and that line width also affects perspective so when you're drawing objects that are closer to the screen you use a thicker line and objects that are far away back into you know the background you use a uh, you know a lighter a lighter line so that's that's something to take note of and to be aware of and so there are many other ways but you you're going to really the most the most used um ways i've seen that line is used is um to emphasize depth to show perspective objects in the, in the foreground and object in the background to emphasize impo importance now this even works when you're, you're drawing figurines now when you have the, the muscular parts of the body there are some parts of the body that you know that goes inside and like the jugular knot whoa um but like the jugular knot on the neck or you have the um clavicle and um we call it the collarbone we have the collarbone or the clavicle when you're drawing a character at that point you're going to you know make that part a little bit darker because you are trying to emphasize the fact that, that it's it's deep daily exercise and assignments to help you warm up and get ready in the next video we're going to be doing a lot of drawing and i think these exercises are very good and i i'm practicing these exercises myself you know i use them to warm up before i start to draw anything so this is something that you can use to just get get yourself started and warm up before you actually start drawing now the first the first is to draw straight lines in all directions just like this you see just like this using your elbow and your shoulder right don't draw with your wrist draw with your elbow and your shoulder and keep keep that motion going in all directions now i know this sound this looks like a silly 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 um <laughs> exercise but just keep doing it it's just going to help you gain you know um mileage and help you understand how to draw in all directions and you may you may not really realize what you are doing until you have something you're working on and then you have to draw in a particular direction and you and yeah i know for most people to say yeah I, I can simply rotate the canvas but rotating the canvas will not help you understand it will not help you gain that experience and know how to draw lines in different angles because you're just you're just escaping you're escaping from experience and you're cheating yourself so learn to draw lines in all directions using your shoulder and your elbow it's kind of like a practice to just get the whole feeling warmed up to get yourself warmed up you know and it's just just a 40 minutes exercise so you, you, this first one you're going to do for like 10 minutes and then you move to draw circles and ovals right you're going to move to drawing circles and ovals using your shoulder right this time you're not using your elbow you're using your shoulder and you're trying to draw you're trying to draw circles and over ovals and you keep doing it and doing it. you feel the whole page with it and you just keep doing it for the next for 30 for te next uh, for 10 minutes and then you move to draw straight lines and connect the dots so what you do is you just draw straight lines and you connect let's say you draw parallel lines like this and then you connect the dots and then you connect the dots and connect the dots and you keep doing that so you're able to do intentional lines you're able to draw intentional lines that you know meets 
at the point where you want it to be you're able to direct your lines properly now the fourth exercise here is to draw repeating lines this is more like um, exercising build-ups line build up and line width and you start with a really thick line and you build up on the same line on the same shape without without creating fuzzy lines without creating hairy looking lines you build up on the same shape and and you keep doing that and you keep doing that for te for 10 minutes so you do that 10 10 10 10 minutes that's 40 minutes every single day or at least every time before you draw you keep doing that and you find out that you're in a short while you're going to get really 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 good now let's let's just look at a summary so we talked about real quick we talked about the elements of 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 art and we looked at line shape color texture form value and space and we're going to be looking at some of these elements in depth as we continue we looked about we talked about what is a line and we talked we, look, we looked at four notes that you need to know about you know lines and we we just made mention of fundamentals and all of that we look at a, a physical drawing techniques to help you get better we talked about the two stages of drawing anything which we made mention of the mapping out stage and the cleanup stage we looked at line weight and we 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 talked about what a line weight is and what is used for we said it's used to convey importance it's used to emphasize depth we use it to to uh, indicate objects in distance and to um to we use it we use that in perspective and other expressions we talked about line build up and we talked about how to get better with your lines we said use a good pencil or brush disable line smoothing for digital artists make sure you use pen pressure if you're using a graphics tablet use your arm to your elbow to draw to draw to gain line confidence and avoid fuzzy lines we said use quick strokes to and the arm technique to get better the arm technique is the technique of using your shoulder and your elbow to draw line weights we used we talked about line weight and using finer lines for details and thicker lines for outlines making reference to david nakayama and then we looked about we talked about the daily exercise and assignment so i would like to see this in the next live class i will be having right just to see some of that those exercise and what you've been up to so that will be all for today thank you for taking your time to go through this lesson like this video if it has been helpful to you i will see you in the coming days on our live session bye